we're going to be using the Veris PXU series differential pressure transducer with the Hobo Energy Logger. This device outputs an analog signal uh, that can be configured in the field for either 4 to 20 milliamps, 0 to 5 volts, or 0 to 10. Also, there are several pressure ranges that are supported uh, 1 inch of water column, 2.5, 5, 10. So, the important thing is that you set up the sensor. The, for your application before you set up the logger for use with the with the sensor so have a look at the manual set the sensor for the range that you want to monitor in inches of water column and also what kind of output you want 0 to 5 volts 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps our loggers can handle any of those um, this particular screenshot we're going to talk about the energy logger and the FSFS CVIA analog module. So we have our logger connected to our serial USB to serial adapter. Um, have a look through the documentation to make sure you have the driver loaded correctly uh, before you try to do this. We have it all set up in Hoboware. This is our free version of Hoboware. We're going to click on the first icon, launch logger or launch device. We can see it's connected. So we're going to click on OK to get into the launch screen and configure the logger for use with the PXU. So we have one FSCVIA module plugged in. You can see that there's two channels. One says voltage, one says current. They both can do either voltage or current. This is just the way they come from the factory. So we want to configure the first channel. Uh, we're, we don't have anything connected to the second channel, so we're going to leave that unchecked. But in order to configure this for this PXU, we're going to click on the little uh, yellow box here, and that's going to take us into the module configuration. So we are going to set up this PXU for 4 to 20 milliamps, uh, 4 to 20 milliamp output. So we can set all these configuration parameters manually, or we can use the pre-programmed configurations that come with Hoboware. So we're going to do that. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. So if we click on load, it will open a, uh, a menu of all of these different pre-configured uh, config files. HCFG is their extension. We're going to scroll down through here. We want to use the PXU in a 10 inch of water column 4 to 20 milliamp configuration. So we're going to keep scrolling until we find the part number which is T ver PXU. And there we go. So this is T ver PXU L. This is the one without. Um, there's one with a display and without a display. I believe the L is with a display. Um, they're scaled the same way. So we want the 10. Again, C stands for current. And then the number after that stands for the scaling factor that we're using. So we're going to scroll down here until we find the one for 10 inches of water column, which is right here. So T ver PXU L C 10. So you can see here. It says scaled is 0 to 10 inches of water column, and it needs 20 seconds of excitation. We're going to talk about excitation in a moment. So let's check on that, continue. And now what it did is it just populated all of these parameters uh, correctly for this sensor. So our sensor name will be differential pressure. The input is current. The scaled values are inches of water column. The output of the sensor, we configured it 4 to 20 milliamps equals 0 to 10 inches of water column. Again, you have to make sure that the sensor is configured for this because you have to do a configuration in that sensor or in that differential pressure device um, before you set this up. If these don't match, it won't work correctly. And again, that's all written in the manual. So once we're happy with this configuration, we can click on configure and it's sent to that module. One thing to keep in mind, you see excitation power is a 20 second warm up. If we click on set excitation power, you can see how that was configured. This sensor needs 20 minutes of 20 seconds of power before it starts outputting a stable measurement. So you cannot log any faster than um, every 20 seconds. The reason we're selecting warm up time is it saves battery power on the logger. This particular logger can also be AC powered so you could turn it on continuously or if it's a short deployment, you can turn it on continuously also. 
Keep in mind, if you do use warm-up with this particular device that we have here, it has an LCD display on it, so that LCD will be blank until 20 seconds before your logging interval comes. Then it will power up, stabilize, take a measurement, and turn off again. So if you want this to be illuminated all the time, you're going to have to use continuous power. If you need to leave this out there for extended periods of time, you should probably get the AC adapter for this logger. Click on OK, and then when we click on Configure, the configuration is sent to that module, and it stays in the module until the module is reconfigured. So even if you remove the, the module from this logger and put it in a different um, logger, that configuration is, is um, retained in that module. So it's asking us if we want to configure the next channel. No, we're not going to use it. And then you can set up your um, logging interval. Uh, Logging duration, again, keep in mind, that is how long it takes to fill the memory, not how long the batteries last. And you can start it logging a couple of different ways. We're going to go ahead and start it. We'll get a warning message about using excitation, and it just says, be careful, um, because you may run out of battery if you have continuous excitation turned on. So we say launch anyway, and we're up and running. And we can see here, when power is applied to the device, First, it tells us what range it's set for. So this is 10 inches of water column. And then it stabilizes out. Um, this needs to be, there's a zeroing function in the sensor, but basically this is the way it looks when it's powered.